Okay. Mm-hmm. Home of Africa's youth, the 77%. Welcome back to the 77%, the home of Africa's youth. My name is Edith Kimani and this week we are in Nairobi, Kenya, a city where I was born and raised and what a very significant place, Uhuru Park, where all four of our presidents were sworn in. They promised improved infrastructure, better access to healthcare and sanitation, and all of them consistently promised one thing, more jobs, particularly for young people. So how exactly did they do? Well, over the years, unemployment has been reducing in Kenya. And as we speak, the latest figure suggests that unemployment is just under 8%. Not bad compared to the rest of Africa. But youth unemployment is where the problem really is. You see, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, which is our statistics body here in Kenya, says that nine out of every 10 Kenyans who are unemployed are under the age of 35. So why is it that the people who need the jobs the most are the ones who aren't getting access to them? I want to figure this out, and I really want you to come with me. So let's go. <laughs> I've just been speaking to Patrick, who's been working in Nairobi for a couple of years as a taxi driver, and we were talking about unemployment and why we're filming this, but he's brought up something interesting, that unemployment can be a generational problem in this country. Na sasa kwenu, vile baba yako alipoteza kazi, your siblings, dada zako na kaka zako, mlipata urahisi kupata kazi ama imekuwaji yu miaka yote? Imekuwa ngumu kwa kupata kazi juu kitu ya kwanza, Masomo unaona kulingana na venye mzee alivuto wa kazi hakuweza kutupeleka shule mzuri atukua atukua na maisha yani ile maisha mzuri ile standard mzuri ya maisha so tumekuwa na wakati mgumu kuanzia ma brother zangu sistangu yani tumekuwa maisha imekuwa ngumu na sasa kwako wewe imekuwaje ndio ukaweza kujimudu kujitoa kwa hiyo cycle ya kutopata kazi E, mimi kulingana ve, na kwa, niko waja niseme mpaka mahali nimefika waja niseme ni kuwa mtu mwaminifu kwa kila kitu yenye nafanya nimepitia mambo nyingi nimefanya kazi ya vibarua nimefanya kazi ya mjengo nimefanya ka, biashara e, nimefanya kazi ya matatu nimefanya vitu nyingi sana lakini kulingana na venye Yani nimekuwa mtu mwaminifu kwa ile kitu yote nafanya. Ka nimeajiriwa kazi mahali, ka venye nilikuwa nafanya kazi ya matatu, nafanya hiyo kazi ni kaa yangu. In trying to find the answer to the question, where is the problem with youth unemployment, I found myself here at Mama Rock's Gourmet Burger. Luckily, I have two young gentlemen here who will help me answer this question. Kibet Keegan, who's 31, and Vincent Otieno, who's 25. Why aren't young people getting employed? Most of these jobs are on connection basis. They are not on, the, you'll find that it's not basically just on merit. It's not, uh, you'll find people who, are, who have, who hold jobs that they don't, they're not supposed to hold. The people who need, who actually have the given skills but are, have not been given the opportunity to, to apply themselves. What responsibility do we have, I guess that's what I'm trying to understand as young people, in creating environments, of, uh, job environments for ourselves? You have like, local comedians who've made, who've made money through YouTube. You would expect that uh, the government would support this because this means uh, these guys are making money without us really putting in a lot of effort. But the irony is, the moment the pe people started making such money, now there are taxes that are being implemented for you to make such videos. Uh, this is space that somebody has created for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yet the moment you've already started that, the government sees an opportunity, starts taxing that before you even start making money. That's interesting. So you yeah. feel that the government is, rather than being regulated, is being exploitative. Yes. Okay. We have a phrase here in Kenya that Serikali ni watu, the government is the people. Is the people. If that is true, then why aren't we holding ourselves accountable? When the government is on the trail, yeah, when they go, you know, asking for people to vote for them, you know, they come with manifestos, and then suddenly, in a Kenyan context, people forget of our problems. So then, then we're responsible because we forget our own problems. Yeah. 
How can you possibly ask your member of parliament to remember your problem? If you're the one who's hungry, you should be the one knocking on his door. That is true. We are responsible, but we don't have the capacity to challenge these people, yeah? The, we, the system has managed to like, put us down in a way that we spent so much time trying to like, put food on the table that the only time we get to voice our opinion is during elections. In the next 20 years, if we're still talking about this problem and there's a youth bulge and there's more of us who are under 35 and this problem still persists, what do you think the consequences will be? Maybe we're just too afraid to like face the government or we are, we are too afraid to like challenge the status quo but it's 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 a bubble that's gonna burst at some point and the consequences are grave i feel like that because uh, and we are actually facing the consequences right now the crime rate in nairobi for example is crazy high uh, things like prostitution and that's why we see politicians stealing so much money just to stash it somewhere because they know their time is almost up yeah All right, so we're still trying to figure out why youth unemployment is so high in Kenya. And we are going to be speaking to Cynthia Wandia, who is herself an entrepreneur. We are now at a Nairobi Garage, a co-working space. Really amazing idea and also a fantastic place for startups. A couple of people who we've spoken to have said, look, we have the capacity, we have the skill set, we have the knowledge, but we just don't have the privilege. We don't have wealthy parents to give us capital to begin. Are they just whining or are these real struggles that you face before starting a business? I think these are real struggles. Mm -hmm. I genuinely can see how um, it's, the access seems denied. Um, and from the other side, so recruiting is, tends to be a very challenging topic anywhere in the world. Um, and here, uh, as an entrepreneur, you just try to find, you look in as many places as you can to find as skilled people as you can. Mm -hmm. You are limited by time in some cases, resources, and so you tend to look at or look to more familiar sources of, um, of skilled labors. In Kenya, we find there could be many reasons why the youth uh, are not finding jobs. One, uh, I think the, the, our tradition uh, type of education system kind of uh, prepared people like uh, go to school and get good grades and then thereafter you find uh, an office job but that has really changed so there are very many youth out there maybe around uh, uh, maybe 80 percent who are home they went up to high school and others have gone up to the university but they have no skill that they can be able to go and sell for them to get employed. For example, every year, about 5 million people are looking for a job. The government aims to produce like 1 million jobs per year. You can see that the gap already is quite wide. The whole country was able to, to, to generate about 80-50 jobs. And out of these 80-50 jobs, 85% of these jobs came from informal, small and medium and micro enterprises. So what does that tell us? It tells us the future of jobs in this country are found within the informal sector, within micro and small enterprises. Okay, I guess I don't need to add anything else. The Minister for Youth in Kenya has just spoken to us and you've heard what she said. What do you think about her comments? Tell us down below, we can continue this debate online. It actually never ever has to end. This is the secret. Um, but speaking of things that have to end, this show must come to an end, just like my other hairstyle had to come to an end. It took us a while to get the minister, obviously, but eventually when we did, I was a whole new woman and you can watch all new shows and all new programs of the 77% right here on this YouTube channel. So click away, subscribe away and I hope to see you soon right here. Thank you for watching.